Hi, and welcome to Cubase 3. Before we start, I want to make a few general comments about your system requirements and working with Cubase. An 800 megahertz processor will definitely work, but a 3 gigahertz processor really gives you a helpful amount of additional power. One gigabyte of RAM will give you significantly more responsiveness than 512 megabytes. Using two monitors is also recommended. Visually, a dual monitor setup is much more comfortable for you to work on. If you use a single hard drive, it's a good idea to split it into two partitions, one for your operating system and the other you'd use for recording. But it's always preferable to use a second hard drive. Remember, Cubase can use as much as 80 megabytes of disk space per one minute of recording time. If you multiply this by the number of tracks you can play at the same time, well, you see that the transfer rate of your hard drive is very, very important. It's also a good idea to defragment your hard drive from time to time. This is going to help your computer's overall performance. And finally, it's a good idea to back up your project regularly on an external hard drive. Next, let's talk about audio hardware. Cubase will run with a 16-bit stereo sound card, which supports at least a 44.1 kHz sampling rate. But you will have a lot more feasibility with 24 or even 32-bit depth. These will give you a much more dynamic range of sound, a higher sampling rate, and, of course, thus, better end results. And now a few words about drivers. Cubase supports ASIO DirectX or Windows Multimedia compatible drivers. Let me speak first about the ASIO DirectX. ASIO stands for Audio Stream In Out. This technology was developed by Steinberg. Today, ASIO has made its mark as the driver standard for delivering low latency transfer of digital audio. The bottom line is that ASIO technology allows for communication directly between Cubase and the audio card, and as a result, the ASIO driver provides a lower input output delay. DirectX is Microsoft technology for handling various types of multimedia under Windows. Cubase supports DirectX, or to be more precise, Cubase supports Direct Sound, which is a part of DirectX and is used for playing back and recording audio. Next, we've got the Windows Multimedia System. This uses the Windows Multimedia driver for the audio card and the ASO driver. A few words now about how to handle the audio signal after it leaves your computer. In order to monitor your project, you're going to need some headphones, speakers, and if you can, studio monitors. An audio selector, sometimes called an audio switcher, is also very handy in this setup. Now, what's the difference between speakers, studio monitors, and headphones? Let's get one fact straight right from the start. Under no circumstances should you make alterations to your mix based on what you hear in your headphones. On the other hand, if you record vocals or acoustic instruments, headphones become really handy for monitoring early recorded tracks. We also often hear this question, can't I just use my hi-fi speakers? Well, the answer is yes, you can, but there is still a problem with this approach, even if you've got a good set of speakers. Most consumer systems have built-in equalization curves that add some sheen to your sound. On the other hand, 
Studio monitors are engineered to present the material with the utmost accuracy. Just a quick word now about microphones. If you're going to record any acoustic sources at all, the importance of a good microphone cannot be exaggerated. The topic of microphones is a very broad one on which I could spend easily a few hours. However, what kind of microphone or microphones you really need really depends on your specific musical circumstances. So let me mention one thing. A large diaphragm mic will serve you better than a few inexpensive condenser or dynamic mics. By the way, a large diaphragm microphone has a diaphragm of more than three-quarter inches in diameter. Last, but definitely not least, in these general introductory comments, the importance of an external hard drive. I mentioned this earlier. It does serve two functions. First of all, it's a reliable and easy-to-use backup for your projects. Secondly, when you've recorded more than a few projects, you may find yourself running out of space on your PC or Mac, and it really makes sense to archive inactive projects on an external hard drive, which is easy to access anytime you need it. And that concludes our introductory segment on Cubase.